All right, so I want to introduce uh, Caroline Wong. Um, Caroline's at, uh, at Cobalt, and uh, your presentation today is going to be on uh, cloud security. So Caroline, take it away. Wonderful. John, thank you so much. I do wish that we could be physically in the same place together. I would give you a big, big hug. Um, this is not a bad backup option. Um, and so uh, here I am. Uh, my name is Caroline. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Cobalt. I am thrilled to be here today with you uh, virtually at CornCon. Um, so I started my DevSecOps career 16 years ago now, leading information security teams at eBay and Zynga. Uh, and these were super cool places to be working in cybersecurity. In both cases, we were running online operations 24 by seven with millions of simultaneous users daily. eBay had an uptime requirement of 99.94% and as one of the first major electronic commerce shops enabled strangers to transact with each other over the internet. Zynga was growing incredibly rapidly as an early adopter of Amazon AWS. In 2009, the Zynga game Farmville launched and in just a few weeks, the game went from zero to 10 million daily active users. A few months later, it rose to 80 million daily active users. And so now at Cobalt, we build security software. And like so many DevOps companies, we have data-driven product-based teams, naturally we value automation and failing fast. And so today I wanna to talk about five interwoven themes. Theme number one, modern software and internet security is not a zero sum game. Theme number two, the hardest problems to solve in cybersecurity are not technical problems. Theme number three, the most powerful solutions that are required to address cybersecurity problems today will require people and process innovation. Theme number four, cybersecurity has many different facets and it can seem complicated, but it is not impossibly complex. There are fundamentals that we as industry professionals can rely on and we should not allow ourselves to get too caught up in the myth that these problems are too hard to solve. Number five, protecting the world's digital value is not something that is just the job of security professionals or just the job of developers. Cybersecurity has always been an outcome, a result of the behaviors and interactions and decisions and actions of many different people. This has never been more true than it is today, and I really believe that we are all in this together. My hope is that if you're working in DevSecOps on a day-to-day -day basis, as you are making decisions and solving problems and making things happen, that these themes might be something that you can draw upon for inspiration. I do expect that these themes will continue to evolve. But when I ask myself, why am I excited about the future of Security Cloud Native? These are some of the answers that I have today. So modern software and internet security is not a zero sum game. First and foremost, security is about protecting value. In today's modern world, a lot of the things that we value are shifting from the physical realm to the digital realm. And that is why cybersecurity is so important. Now, security practitioners used to have this story that they would tell about how to think about cybersecurity. The story said that if John and I are running away from a bear, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to run faster than John. And so in this scenario, the underlying assumption is that I value myself and I don't value John. My success doesn't depend on John. And so as long as I get away from the bear, it doesn't matter to me if John becomes the bear's lunch. 
The problem with this analogy, and there are several, is that in reality, software companies and the digital value created by organizations does not exist in silos. We are not independent islands. I actually think that a more appropriate analogy for how things work in cybersecurity is a three-legged race. Because in a three-legged race, my partner and I are dependent upon each other. In order to win, we have to work together in lockstep. And I really think this is more of how it is today when it comes to software security. Every software company, including ours, is part of a tightly interwoven ecosystem of software companies that provide a variety of products and services. Each of those companies can use other software companies to help them do their work and so on. A perfect example of this dependency between software companies happened to me on Monday, January 4th. That morning, I woke up next to my five-year-old daughter on the bottom bunk of her bunk bed, and I looked at my phone. It was my first day back at work after a two-day vacation, two-week vacation, and I had received this text message from my friend and colleague, Anna. It, oops, it turned out that Slack was down, and that outage lasted about six hours or so. This was not an ideal way to start the first working day of the new year. At Cobalt, we're a hyper-growth B2B SaaS company. Today, we serve nearly 1,000 customers, and we use about 75 or so vendors. And so you can think about the company, and any DevOps company really, like a tree. The vendors we rely on are like the roots of the tree, and the customers are like the branches. And of course, for any SaaS company, if all goes well, hopefully those branches will, will bear fruit year after year. I alluded to this, I have two young kids, and so we watch a lot of Disney movies in our house. And so as I was thinking about this particular theme, I couldn't help but think of this song lyric from the Disney movie Pocahontas. And we are all connected to each other in a circle, in a hoop that never ends. Because I think that really is how it is with modern software companies. And this means that security is not something that we can care about in a vacuum. We must acknowledge the dependencies that we have on other software organizations for the state of our security. It is no longer enough to care just about the security of your own organization because your partners in security, your vendors in security, these things affect your risk profile and the ability to protect the value that you create. So theme number two is this idea that the hardest problems to solve in cybersecurity are not technical. I am the LinkedIn Learning Instructor for the Master the OWASP Top 10 uh, Learning Path. And uh, the new version came out yesterday, so that is super exciting. I'm actually going to be uh, recording a new course on the update. And a little story that I wanna share is that before I started creating the content for these instructional videos in 2018, I actually didn't understand all the details of the top 10. Now, the first version of the OWASP top 10 came out in 2003. And I started my career in cybersecurity in 2005. I became the chief of staff to the global information security team at eBay and naturally, at a place like eBay, web application security was and is of extremely high importance. The problem was that every once in a while, so I knew that OWASP top 10 was super important and I tried to learn it. And so I would download the document and I would try to read it and I would get stuck. I would get bored or I would get confused or something more urgent would come up and I would put it back down. 
So I never really learned all the details until I had to teach it to other people. Now, the latest version just came out yesterday and I will have thoughtful, thorough comments about it. Um, the crazy thing is having looked at it briefly, despite the OWASP top 10 having gone through several iterations over now the past 17 years, the types of issues that we find in web applications is pretty much still the same. This is the same stuff that the best and the brightest in our industry have been talking about for 17 years. If I had a kid when the first OWASP top 10 came out, that kid would be driving a car today and about to, and, and able to vote in the 2024 election. I mean, 17 years is a long time. So why haven't these problems been fixed? Because we know, as an industry, we know how to find these issues and we know how to fix them and we know how to prevent them. So this is, this is frustrating and silly and also a fascinating problem for us to solve. Um, sometimes when I think about the rest of my career in cybersecurity, I think to myself, you know what? By the end of my career, I really want us to have a different OWASP top 10 and not because we just pick different things to put on it. I want it to be different because we've actually been able to eliminate some of these problems in our software. So along the same thread, next I wanna talk about this common misconception that the biggest and the baddest problems in software security are technical problems. Let's talk about the 2017 Equifax breach. More than 140 million people affected a widely accepted theory that the attackers were state-sponsored spies from China, a CEO who stepped down three weeks after the breach became public, $1.4 billion to clean up the mess, and an FTC settlement. How did this breach happen? It was not because of a super sophisticated zero-day technical issue. It was because some software was found to be vulnerable and a patch was made available and Equifax did not deploy the patch. This was not a crazy technical problem that lacked a solution. The technical solution was available. This was, in my mind, a lack of people and process innovation. Now, last year, threat actors managed to plant malware in some monitoring software, which happened to be in use by some hundreds of organizations. And when the news first broke, this breach was described as a highly sophisticated, targeted and manual supply chain attack by an outside nation state, which sounds very intense, and it is. But when you draw back the curtain, it seems as though maybe they use the password SolarWinds123 to protect the company's update server. In which case, it is no wonder malicious threat actors took advantage and planted some malware. This is unfortunately a simple security misconfiguration. Now at COBOL, we do pen testing. We do a lot, a lot, a lot of pen testing. In this year's state of pen testing report, which covers data from more than 1600 pen tests, we reported that security misconfiguration was the number one most commonly identified vulnerability type found across COBOL pen tests for the fourth year in a row. So we know about this. Um, we're just not doing the simple, not, not easy, but simple things in order to prevent it. And sometimes I wonder about why. You know, um, today actually, my father-in-law became a ransomware victim. His wife, my mother-in-law, called me and she said, 
he's on the phone and they're asking for payment. And I said, okay, well, is it his work computer or is it his home computer? And she said, it's his home computer. And I said, okay, well, it might actually be illegal for him to pay the ransom. And even if he pays, there's no guarantee that he's going to get his data back. So that's a really tough position to be in. Now, I think that as a technologist and as someone who's been in cyber for 16 years, it is relatively easy for me to say, look, update your software, install your patches, do some backups and make sure they work. Like so many things in life, this is easier said than done. And while I think that, you know, for a person who is not necessarily a technology expert, these are things that might not happen day to day. And for an organization, it's even harder. And I think that the reason it's so hard is actually because, I think it's actually because it's kind of boring. You know, I've been in those meetings where technologists get together and they say, look, what are we planning for the next quarter? You know, how are we going to spend our resources? What are the exciting projects? What are the quick wins? What's going to get us more revenue? And backups don't usually make it to the top of that list. I think it's because it's kind of boring and it's not that sexy. And so I don't know if we need to make it less boring, more sexy, or if we just need to acknowledge that sometimes important stuff just has to get done, even if it's kind of boring. Okay, theme number four, cybersecurity has many different facets and it can seem complicated, but I believe it is not impossibly complex because I know that there are fundamentals that we as industry professionals can rely on and we should not allow ourselves to get too caught up in the myth that these problems are too hard to solve. In 2005, as a new college grad, I started my first ever full-time job as an information security engineer at eBay. And when I walked in the door, I was handed a 50-page stack of information security policies. And I was told that I was responsible for answering questions about it from technology teams and from the business. This was overwhelming. I thought to myself, how am I ever going to learn all this stuff? It seems so complex. After a few months, I found out that by meeting with different people who had questions about eBay security policy, writing them down, asking my manager and going back to that person to share with them my newly acquired answer, I found out that people were asking the same questions over and over again. Throughout my career, I have been on two security teams as a practitioner. I have led a global product management team. I've done some consulting, and I'm currently at my first startup. This series of diverse experiences has helped me to see that cybersecurity is complicated, but it is not impossibly complex. And just as an FYI, the background for this particular slide, uh, if you Google CISO mind map, uh, then, then, then you'll see this graphic. So backing up, come on slide. Boop, boop. Okay. NIST 853 is nearly 500 pages long. I have read every single one of those pages. It's a long document. PCI DSS is more than 130 pages long. The BSIM is more than 100 pages long. And the ASVS is more than 60 pages long. This is just, it's just so much, so much text. It's so much paper. It's so much. Why is it so much? I really think that the fundamental principles of cybersecurity and application security for that matter, software security, whatever you want to call it, 
DevOps, DevSecOps, I think it can be boiled down to four basic building blocks. A couple of years ago, some of my colleagues and I worked together on a white paper called A Practitioner's Guide to Application Security. It is a 20 page document that outlines how simple, not easy, but simple application security can be. It's still available on the internet. You can Google the practitioner's guide to application security and get your 20 page copy for free. It includes this one page poster that we call the modern AppSec framework. And this framework has just four components. Number one, govern, AKA know your assets. Number two, find. Number three, fix. And number four, prevent. Now, right now in cybersecurity land, there is a lot of emphasis on automation. This storyline says that because we have a lot of cybersecurity problems and we also have a talent shortage, you should try to automate as much as possible so that you are less dependent on people. I happen to strongly disagree that automation can solve all of the world's cybersecurity problems. As my friend and former colleague, Vanessa Sauter, eloquently shared in her B-Science presentation last year, there are entire classes of security vulnerabilities that can only be discovered by humans. Finding things like race conditions, business logic flaws, and chained exploits, which are some of the most interesting ones, uh, these cannot be automated. We need human creativity, human innovation, human judgment, human opinion, and human decisions to drive the right outcomes in this industry. It is true that software is being developed faster and faster, and some cybersecurity teams are using automation to manage some of the incredible volume of work that they're trying to tackle. However, I think that solving the most important cybersecurity problems have to include both automation and manual effort. I think that both DevOps and DevSecOps benefits by innovating when it comes to people and process. Security practitioners in particular, we need a better model for talent distribution. We need standardized automated workflows that can take the friction out of working cross-functionally between security and engineering teams to find and fix security issues because it is often not the security person who can actually fix a vulnerability. It's usually the security person's job to go and find the developer, the engineer who actually has access to and the ability to make these changes convince them that this is an important thing to do and to prioritize it and to actually get it fixed. Security and engineering have to work hand in hand. Security can find problems all day long, but if we wanna get these problems fixed, we've gotta partner and we've gotta collaborate. Now, I'm just waiting for my slide to update. You got this slide, okay. We talked about people in process innovation, and here is my cheeky analogy. Consider for a moment the following hypothetical scenario. Imagine that we're in the midst of a global pandemic and a highly infectious deadly virus is affecting millions of people around the world. It is so bad that in the world's richest country, more than half a million people have already died from this disease. If you think it's a technical problem, then you might think that the most important thing to do is to develop a vaccine. Developing a vaccine is a super hard scientific problem to solve. And there are lots of very smart, very capable scientists who can figure that out. But what happens when an effective vaccine is created? The technical issue is solved. So does that problem just disappear? Of course not. In some ways, it might actually be easier to invent a new vaccine than it is to figure out how did your procurement, 
how to do distribution, how to do communication, and how to actually get people vaccinated. Just as we can know about the OWASP top 10 for 20 years, doesn't mean we can eliminate and forget about those types of problems. Just because you have a vaccine doesn't mean that you can vaccinate enough people to eliminate and forget about a pandemic. So I'm here to challenge where we are as an industry and to look forward to imagine where we might be headed. It is time for us to examine the principles that we think about when it comes to cybersecurity and how the future of cloud native security is going to be, because it will be what we make of it. I wanna end this talk by describing something that I believe is completely fundamental and yet not often acknowledged in the security industry. Security is not a vitamin or a Band-Aid. It is not something you can inject or do at the last minute or add on after the fact. It is not a feature. Security has always been the result of decisions and actions made by many different people. It's actually the outcome of an unpredictable dance between many people. And so I think that for DevSecOps to be successful, we've got to build a collaborative approach that brings us together. If you know how to salsa or lindy hop, you can extend a hand, invite a partner and step onto the dance floor. But security is not always invited to the party. Too often, development security and operations dance alone. We must invent the dance style to sync our movements and create a beautiful partnership. It is Friday afternoon. I am ending this talk with some lyrics from High School Musical. We are all in this together. Once we know that we are, we're all stars and we see that we're all in this together. And it shows when we stand hand in hand, make our dreams come true. That is it. You get 30 minutes back and or you can go watch the other probably amazing talk that's happening at the same time as this one. My name is Caroline. I would love to hear from you. Let's connect on LinkedIn. Here is my email. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. Us, Barely. Barely. So I'm looking for some scanning tools for dynamic and, and static scanning. Yep. Is that a product that your company has? It is not. So we happen to do purely manual pen testing. Um, but, you know, we'd love to talk with you about that. And uh, myself, having worked uh, at Sigital in the past, uh, which certainly did uh, manage those types of services, uh, would love to chat sort of all things application security. But Cobalt does not actually provide either SAST or DAST. We do exclusively manual pen testing. So I work for a company that does .NET development, and also we host an AWS, you know, uh, open side of PHP and open source libraries. So I'm looking for something that does you know, automate that uh, schedule process. We should we should chat. Uh, I'd love to I'd love to chat further. Um, and I've realized you're probably getting this super weird view of me just because I'm leaning in to try and hear. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna continue to lean in, but I'm just gonna go off video so you're not just like staring into my into my eardrums. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I could get closer to the microphone now that I know what it is. Are you able to hear me better now? That is much better. Thank you so much. Um, so should we use the contact email or maybe I can just get it from John uh, Johnson here? Uh, Absolutely. Caroline at cobalt.io would love to continue the conversation. You know, even though Cobalt doesn't do SAST or DAST, um, I have a huge interest in all things application security uh, and would be very happy to provide my perspective. Well, thanks a lot because I work the company I work for I'm on both sides is half infrastructure network and half uh, software development. I'm on both sides, so I'll send you something. My name is Ron Anderson. 
Fantastic. I look forward to speaking with you more, Ron Anderson. Thank you so much for the question. All right, I like to do this thing where I wait an awkward amount of time just in case someone does have a question, but they're just, you know, not quite saying it yet. I think it has been an awkward amount of time. I appreciate so much being able to connect with with you and I and I do wish that I was able to make it out in person. Uh, I'm still very hopeful for being able to do that kind of thing in the future. Um, and I would love to connect uh, again via email, carolinacobalt.io uh, and or on LinkedIn. Thank you so, so much for spending some, some time with me this afternoon and happy Friday. Thank you. Just look at me. <laughs> well, everyone, that's then track two for the day. Uh, we're going to do a couple closing ceremonies in track one in a few minutes. And then the outside bar opens at six. So uh, enjoy, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate everybody. And uh, enjoy the rest of the con. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yep, right there. You can go through the peaky hole if you want. We won't yell at you. <laughs> All right, let's do that.